Hey folks, what's going on? It's Mike here, and in this lesson in the SFML series, we're going to be looking at handling events, that's key presses and mouse clicks. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So what we're going to be looking at again is just pretty much our hello world application that we had last time. So go ahead and run it just so you can see what the output was. And hopefully you added some different shapes or got to play around with that in a previous lesson. So with this lesson, I just want to be able to handle some different events here meaning key presses and mouse clicks. All right, so how are we even going to start with this? Well, there's a couple different options that we have here just to give you some backup. So again, SFML is pretty well documented. You can check out the tutorials and there's actually some modules here at the start for handling keyboard, mouse, and joystick. So we can leave those up as a reference. I'm going to go ahead and just look through the documentation. I know a little bit about the library, but I want to get you in the habit of just using or leaning on API documentation when there isn't always a tutorial or a video uh, available. That said, if there is a video that you want to see, make sure you comment below, like, and subscribe so you can see it. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at some of the classes here. And since we're going to be working with events here, that's actually the class that I want to search for. So I'm going to search for event here and let's just go ahead and take a peek. And we're going to see all these different types of event types. In fact, there's lots of different structures here and things that we might be interested in. So let's go ahead and just maybe see something that looks interesting, like a key event, for instance, if we want to handle a key press. So for example, we have keyboard keys and we can maybe look at the keyboard key um, code that could have been pressed. So if we want to look for a specific key or so on. And then we also have the different uh, attributes that could be had related to just things like mouse buttons here. So I'm going to go ahead and just look at uh, mouse button and the mouse button uh, pressed event, for instance, that we might want to be able to check here. And in fact, clicking on this gives me a pretty big list of the different enumerated uh, types here that are set up to detect these types of things. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try out one of these. Um, I'm going to actually just start with the uh, mouse press here, since that's what we were looking at. And again, that's going to happen in our handle events portion of our code here. So I'm going to say something like if the event dot type is equal to, and everything is in the SFML namespace, and this is going to be some event and the mouse button pressed here. Mouse button pressed. And let's go ahead and just print out a message and say mouse button pressed. Okay, and we'll go ahead and um, and that line here will recompile because we made a change and rerun our program. And let's go ahead and just click a couple times. So I'm clicking, you can maybe pick it up on the audio. And we see that our event is handled. So it's really as simple as that with the SML library. So it's not too bad here. And we're still um, on our event page here. Uh, it might be worth looking at at this point just to look through the uh, documentation uh, again, the event. Um, and just expanding this out so you can see all the different types here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a moment to just look at our key events here and see if we can figure out from the documentation how we would detect a keyboard press. And okay, I have a keyboard event parameter here and key pressed and key released. Okay, now we do have other types of um, attributes here. So we can look at particular keys here, like Alt, Control, Shift, and so on. But let's just work with this uh, keyboard here for key pressed. Uh, and then we have uh, various keys that we can uh, detect. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add another event here. And I'm gonna say if the event type equals SF, and it's gonna another event. And let me go back here to the uh, key pressed and key released. Now key pressed and key released, the difference is going to be key pressed will be called as soon as I am or if I'm pressing a key and released will be after I'm done pressing that key. So usually if you want to detect just one event that happened, we'll use a uh, key released here. So let me go ahead and do key released. And let's just go ahead and say, see out a key was pressed. Okay. And let's go ahead and just test that this is working. And I have a mechanical keyboard, so I'm pretty sure you'll hear my keys uh, when I run this program. And you'll see that keys are being pressed. So let me go ahead and exit that. 
Now, if I go to the more section here, um, we can actually look through some of the uh, code here, which is also sort of interesting, because then we can see for these particular key events, um, if a particular key was actually being pressed here. And that would be looking at the key code here. So let's go ahead and say if a key was pressed, but just a specific key here. So if the event, and while we're looking at the, uh, the key for the particular event that happened and the particular code. Okay, so again, just sort of following this, we have our event. And then, um, well, how did we get to uh, key? Well, if it was a key event that was happening, um, well, there must have been some key pressed here. So this is part of a union. And again, events can have one of these types of events uh, at a given time or sort of um, member uh, data here. So maybe it was a mouse move or mouse button or whatever, but if it was a key related event, then we're looking at keys here. So you'll often see unions used for this purpose here. Okay, and then we need to check in SFML on our keyboard. So let's try to uh, go back here and follow the uh, documentation here. So our keyboard event uh, parameters, we already know it was a key uh, release here, but now we want to figure out what the actual uh, code was here. So again, this is something we can look up or find in a tutorial, but how would we sort of follow the documentation to figure this out? So again, if I look at the keyboard key, uh, which is what we're sort of looking at here, then I can actually find the different key codes here. And you're going to find all the different keys here and how they've been mapped. And you can even get as specific as the left alt, the left shift, left control, etc. here. So let's just go ahead and pick one. In fact, um, the escape key is probably a good one uh, to know about. So escape, uh, I'm just gonna actually going to pick, uh, let's pick uh, the W key because W is often used for uh, movement in games, say. So let's go ahead and just print out, um, and I'll put a little tab here, specifically the W key. And I'll go ahead and put an end line here. And let's go ahead and try to compile this and try to run it. And again, I'll press some keys here, and let's go ahead and press W. And now we are detecting the W and I could still mouse click. In fact, I can click a bunch of these things at once. And that's essentially how we handle key events and mouse click events. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and go back to our event uh, structure here, because at this point, if we can handle keyboard and mouse, well, again, if we go uh, to our classes, there's lots of different other events that we can try to handle, like if you have a joystick or if you're going to build an Android or an iOS application, there are uh, touch events that you could handle. So in this way, I hope that this lesson gives you just a little bit more intuition about sort of navigating some of the API documentation and handling different event types. Now, again, you can go ahead directly to the SFML tutorials and just read how to do this and try to memorize it. But eventually you're gonna to wanna to dig through the API and just figure out how things are working. A great thing is that SFML is also an open source library, so you can always dig in. But at this beginning stage, I wouldn't expect that, and I think it's perfectly fine to just build off of this lesson, build off the tutorials, and just play around in the documentation. So I'll give you a little homework to just go ahead and play with the difference between key released, key pressed, and see if you can get a specific mouse click type. So the difference between a left and a right click printing out. So if you can do all those things, you'll be ready for the next video and we'll see you there. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Take care, folks.